Hi, I'm Ed Marsh. Welcome to this episode of Signals from the OP. I use these periodic video blogs to provide early warning on topics that are strategically important for middle market industrial manufacturers. Rather than worrying about detecting the enemy in the wire in this case though, I pick a topics which management teams should be tracking, but might not as they manage day-to-day -day challenges. And I think today's topic fits in perfectly to that context because it goes to the core of that activity involved in recognizing and detecting trends early enough to capture the opportunity or avoid the pitfalls. Most business people I chat with don't block out time to learn. And my experience is that if you don't block it out, it doesn't happen. Sure, they may read the sports section for entertainment. They may read industry trade journals to keep current on what competitors are up to. They probably read some news to keep current on politics and policy. But those are just keeping up with current events. William Pollard said, learning and innovation go hand in hand. The arrogance of success is to think that what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow. Now, I'm going to assume that most business people believe it's important to innovate. My question is, innovate how? I would predict that the change that's going to impact their industry in the next two or five or ten years is actually brewing in another industry area right now. <clears throat> and often they're missing it because they're limiting the information they consume. Now, I get why that's the limit of what they're consuming. I mean, we're all drinking through a fire hose, just keeping up with the flow of information we have to manage to handle the critical tasks and priorities is tough. The idea of taking on a whole other set of obligations feels overwhelming. And in fact, it's not just about reading more, but it's about identifying gaps in information and perspective and finding, vetting, and engaging sources. It's thinking strategically about what fields or disciplines or industries could be a petri dish for yours to study and to learn early. This is a bunch of brain work that takes time and energy, and that's before you even start to do any of the reading. Now, let me quickly point out that I use reading as a catch-all term. I think that most of what folks should be doing probably is reading, but of course there's audiobooks, there's some great podcasts, and there's other formats as well. So when I say reading, I'm not excluding those. What's really involved in developing is a learning mindset. And deep, impactful, cognitive learning doesn't happen by chance. It takes that mindset. It takes blocking out time, and it takes goals and objectives. And it's not just enough to listen to a fun podcast while you walk the dog. It may mean, in fact, impinging on your Game of Thrones binge watching in the evening to create the time to do this. So how can you go about doing it? I suggest first you need diverse sources. And that diversity is in format, like reading versus podcast. It's in perspective, like Economist versus Wall Street Journal, and it's in industry. And that includes thought leaders and periodicals, books, and more. Now, I don't claim to have this figured out. It's a process, and I'm always hearing about great resources, and you can't use them all. But, for example, my list includes Geopolitical Futures, the Wall Street Journal, including a couple of their topical lead blasts, a number of marketing and sales-related blogs, some innovation and disruption blogs, Springwise for innovation ideas, Wired, Harvard Business Review and MIT Sloan Management Magazine, The Economist, John Malden for macro, social, and economic ideas, Farnham Street Podcast and member site that's about thinking and making decisions, some podcasts including Wondery, Business Wars, Freakonomics, Hidden Brain, Tim Ferriss, and then books. Now my goal for this year is 25. I'm not sure I'll make it. And some I just don't bother to push through if I'm not getting value from them. I often have several underway at once across hard copies of Kindle and audiobook. And I look for books that are diving into disruption and innovation in various industries. And then look for intersections with the space where I'm working with clients. Now this takes time. It means up early, making trade-off decisions. And I don't feel like a slave to every episode or article or chapter. I'm quick to move on, but I know the sources I generally find value. I'll often ask people what the last book they read was. Many can't remember. I find that asking someone what they read is a great proxy for how broadly and strategically they think about their business. But people that don't are often smart and hardworking. They'll even often tell me that they're strategic observers of their industry and they think about change that's happening. But then when I look at their calendars, I see back-to-back -back calls and meetings five days a week. The two are fundamentally incongruent. It takes time to learn. You have to cut out other things. And it takes time to think about what you've learned. And most importantly, more time to process the information. Roll it around in your head. See how it fits with what you know or believe. And let it work into revised mental models. 
I'll leave you with an interesting insight from the military. Often in a 20 year career, about a third of the time is spent in long term learning environments, in the 3 to 12 month courses. And on a daily basis, there's development and training professional, professional and personal beyond the skills training. Compare that to most civilian jobs, where you may be, you know, one week or two months of onboarding, and then have to proactively submit a justification for a day-long seminar some point several years after you start working there. So it's not a perfect comparison, but imagine if you had four months this year set aside for learning. What creative innovations and disruptions would you envision? How about if you spent one hour a day and half a day blocked out a week? The point is that you have to explicitly commit to learning if you want to see around the corners of disruption. I'm Ed Marsh. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Signals from the OP. If you enjoyed it, please share it and subscribe either to my YouTube channel at edmarshspeaks.tv or to the related blog, signalsfromtheop.com.